Today I want to show you how to make a pinhole cover uh, body cap for your DSLR camera. Now I've made one before and uh, just to show you how it works, uh, you're completely bypassing your glass optics. So you, you mount this directly onto your camera and then uh, you can take your photograph this way. I'm going to put this out of the way. Now I know some of you only have point and shoot cameras available to you and you might be thinking if you put a piece of aluminum foil over your lens with a little pinhole you'll get the same effect. And actually what happens then is you get a nice strong vignette but it's not exactly a pinhole camera because you're still going through the glass optics. Um, if you don't have a DSLR, DSLR camera of your own then you can check out one of the school cameras to use with one of these uh, lens caps. Now I'm sending along two Canon and one Nikon because there, of course the school has Canon cameras available for you. Uh, you're welcome to use these on your own computers but please don't uh, take these home for days at a time. Check it out and return it just like you would do any other equipment so that your, the whole class has an opportunity to uh, use them. Uh, it's a big class this semester and um, for sure I want everybody to have the opportunity if they want. So uh, for making your own and if you have any interest in pinhole photography at all, I'd highly encourage you to do that. Uh, a new body cover costs no more than $10 and you can get them from camera stores and I'll give you resources for that. And um, of course I'm going to use a uh, old aluminum can. You can use foil. I don't like foil quite as well because it's obviously it's more um, delicate and you're much more likely to damage it. Now, pinhole photography really isn't about perfection, and so you don't have to make an absolute perfect pinhole camera. Although, if you have a perfect circle, then you're going to uh, theoretically at least have a, a perfect uh, opportunity to, um, to make a sharp image. But because we're using pinhole and we're not using sharp lenses, um, that, that's really a, a kind of a side issue. Now, if you have... Um, well, if you make your, your image a little bit off-center, it's going to give you some distortions. If you have multiple pinpricks, you'll get different effects. And I'll give you examples of how these might look in, in class. So, to get started, um, these are the tools, uh, hopefully you can see, that you need for it. The easiest way to do it, uh, sometimes you have a little bit of a marking right in the middle of your, your lens cap. And if that's the case, or your body cap, rather. And if that's the case, then you can just go ahead and drill. If not, and what you can do is uh, make a couple of dissecting lines right across the corner, uh, the corner, it's a circle, um, right across your lens cap. And assuming that you're actually being somewhat careful and making them right through the, the center of the lens cap, then you'll have some dissecting lines. Pardon me. You'll have dissecting lines. Now obviously I wasn't very careful with it. There actually is a marking here and that makes it very easy to uh, make those lines uh, know where the center is. Now um, of course I want you to do safety glasses when you're using any sort of power tools. Be safe people. The other thing I should point out is definitely do not use your countertop to do this. Um, even if you're very 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 careful you're quite likely to damage your countertop. Put a piece of wood over it, it doesn't matter, and um, even then, still be careful. So, it's as simple as that. Here you can see, hopefully, I have a hole that's more or less in the middle of the lens, uh, body cap, rather. And um, because we're not actually using this as the pinhole, it doesn't have to be exact, just so long as it's close. The next thing you're going to want to do is cut a piece of aluminum foil off of a, a can. And of course, you want to make sure that you have a clean can. You don't have to be very exact with this. Of course, I've rinsed this out already, but you still want to make sure it's nice and dry. It doesn't matter what shape this is, so long as it fits inside here, but it's a little easier if you make it a little smaller. So I'm going to trim this a little bit. Now, 
Next, I'm gonna use a push pin. And the reason I use a push pin is because you can push on it without really um, hurting yourself. But it doesn't take very much force, so just give it a little bit of a push. You get through, and I don't know that this is gonna show up on the video, but you can see it's a very tiny hole, or maybe you can't see. Um, then with a the Sharpie, use the cover on it, you're gonna have a little bit of a rough edge where the pin came through. So just use the, the cover to uh, go ahead and smooth that out. You can also use some, some fine sandpaper if you'd rather, but this is a pretty easy solution. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the black Sharpie to color over the shiny reflective surface. Now, because it's a shiny reflective surface, if you don't do that, um, you're increasing your likelihood of having light flares inside of your lens. It kind of, light kind of bounces around. Doing a little bit of a, a black coloring over that is um, basically cheap insurance. So we'll do that. Take some electrical tape, and again, black is a good choice here. Now the easiest thing to do, of course you want the, the black part to go towards the camera, is hold it away from you and line it up line up the little pinprick hole that you made with the, the center of the, the body cap that you made. Take your piece of tape and secure it down. And we'll just finish taping it off. And you can see it's as simple as that. Now, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, I really encourage you to make one of your own. Um, I'm sending these up because I know um, not everybody has a camera that they would actually even be using a pinhole uh, photograph on, uh, pinhole lens on. But if you do have your own DSLR, I encourage you to do it. It's, it's kind of a fun and different look. And of course, you're not gonna use that for everyday look. Um, everyday photographs, but it can give you a, a little bit of variety, uh, visual, visual um, variety and diversity in your portfolio. Let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing your photograph soon.